All right, so good day everyone. So for today class, we're going to have a lecture uh, regarding musculoskeletal injuries and disorders. So please take note that this will also be part of our midterm exams. So for the introduction, um, what do you experience usually when you have muscle pains or muscular uh, musculoskeletal injuries? So oftentimes class, it always comes, uh, one of the main symptoms that comes from this type of injuries would usually be pain. So as you all know, pain is one of the most common symptoms with diseases that prompts a visit to a healthcare professional. And normally, class, when it comes to pain, it can be managed simply by taking OTC preparations. Okay, so much of the pain for which people attempt to self-treat usually arises from musculoskeletal systems or musculoskeletal injury. Now, one thing you have to remember, class, about pain is pain is not a disease. It's usually a symptom of something else. So something predisposes an individual to having pain. It could be due to headache. Okay, uh, my injury or my, my problem somewhere is a brain, fever, colds, flu, toothaches, arthritis, all of this can lead to, um, yeah, can precipitate pain. It can be due to musculoskeletal injuries or patinamal menstrual cramps. So one thing you have to remember, class, is pain is probably one of the most common reason why people tend to self-medicate. All right, so based on some studies, class, done. Okay, more than 43% of those surveyed, uh, of those um, of people would usually um, are taking, uh, who are taking um, OTC preparation for pain usually have um, other prescriptions as well. And more than 40% did not know about potential drug interactions or GI side effects associated with the treatment for pain. And more than 60% did not know about the precautions for these drugs for those with hepatic or renal diseases. Because you have to remember class. One problem with OTC preparation is for pain, such as NSAIDs, is that they can potentially be damaging to our kidneys. Okay, but one of the uh, uh, mechanisms of action of our uh, NSAIDs is to inhibit COX-1 and COX-2, cyclooxygenase. Okay, okay sana kung nabablock ang COX-2, kasi yun yung pinaka-specific for pain. Okay, pero kasi class, when you block COX-1 as well, you inhibit the production of prostaglandin, which is of course very nephroprotective. Okay, it keeps the arterial, uh, the renal arteries dilated, allowing for more efficient blood flow towards the kidneys. So if you use class non-selective uh, COX inhibitors, such as mefenamic acid, naproxen, okay, yung mga ganong NSAIDs, nawawala yung prostaglandin na yun, which protects the kidneys. So which makes us more prone to having, um, you know, kidney problems. Okay. Now another thing you have to remember also is, uh, aside from that, okay, uh, there are studies associating the use of ibuprofen to worsening hypertension. Say, for example, again, this is something related, naman to still related to our to its effect on our kidneys. Okay. Now, other than that, class, one of the main side effect that I think everybody knows, right? Every pharmacist knows, okay, with with regards to the use of NSAID is that it causes GI irritation, which is again one of the most common side effects, and oftentimes we can address this issue by taking the medicines or the medications uh, before meals, right? So trauma, back pain, and arthritis are the three most common musculoskeletal conditions reported and for which healthcare visits to physicians' offices, emergency departments, and hospitals occur each year. Now, what happens in class when you have musculoskeletal injuries? Okay, so the muscul musculoskeletal system class uh, usually includes the muscle tendons, ligaments, cartilage, and bones. Now, when the when do we get injuries from these? Normally, class, it's either through through your occupation, okay, but may repetitive movement in certain joints such as office workers, kaya kawo sa kanila kakaroon ng carpal tunnel syndrome, okay, or di kaya class involves sa sports ang isang individual, which makes them more prone to musculoskeletal injuries, of course. So muscles are attached to the bones by the tendons, and ligaments connect bones to bones. Under normal conditions, tendons and ligaments have limited ability to stretch and twist, because the because of because of uh, because of their tensile strength, tendons and ligaments rarely rupture unless subjected to intense force, but they may become damaged when hyperextended or overused. So the thing class with our tendons and ligaments is they're very resistant. Okay, kumbaga stretch yan, kaya niya ma-accommodate yung movement natin. Pero sometimes, there comes a time where it now overstretch or now overuse sila. Now, once they are overstretch or overuse, then dito pumapasok yung mga problems natin sa musculoskeletal system natin. So, you start to experience pain. 
synovial uh, bursae or fluid-filled sacs located between joint spaces to provide lubrication and cushioning. Now, normally, because when we get older, yung synovial fluid na yun, we tend to lose that, okay, which makes us more prone to arthritis, okay, normally osteoarthritis. Okay, so let's try to discuss individually yung mga musculoskeletal injuries that could happen to us. So one, one is tendonitis. Okay, it's uh, the inflammation of a tendon which results from acute injury or from chronic overuse of a body part. So again, a classic example of this class would be carpal tunnel syndrome which is characterized by tingling or numbness of the first digits of the hand caused by repetitive use of the hands and wrist. So normally when you're typing, halimbawa, okay, or you're an office worker, so, common sa kanila kasi nagkakaroon ng carpal tunnel syndrome. The other one is bursitis. Okay, it's a common localized, common cause of localized pain, tenderness, and swelling, which is worsened by any movement of the structure adjacent to your bursa. So, the bursa class is yung parang sa may joint area. Okay, parang ligament yan. Okay, and normally class what happens is pwede siyang lumobo. Kaya nga tinawag siya bursitis. Okay, so yun. Next one, the most common type of injuries you get normally when you are involved in sports will be strains and sprains, okay? So when we say strain, okay, ito yung keyword dyan class, it occurs when a muscle, tendon, or ligament has been overstretched, but there are no actual tissue disruption. So ano ba, strain ka, um, tapilok, something like that, okay? Now, kasi class, on the other hand, pag sprain, Okay, occurs when the patient's ligament fibers have experienced partial or complete rupture. Ibig sabihin na punit talaga siya. And the associated joint capsule has suffered a stress injury. So, pwede kasi class na na-overstretch lang yung muscles mo. Ay ba, nag-workout ka, tas, ah! Ang gana. Okay? So, nagkaroon ng overstretching ng muscles, tendons, or ligaments mo. But, there is no actual tissue disruption. So, that's considered a strain. Pero pag merong injury na talaga, we can call that as sprain. Now, something that I myself experience because of our um, setup, I guess online tayo, is lower back pain. So it's it's the fifth most likely reason for a physician visit. So main risk factor for development of lower back pain includes a sedentary lifestyle, poor posture, <coughs> improper shoes, excessive body weight, okay, sleeping posture, and improper technique in lifting heavy objects. Probably kayo rin. You might be experiencing this as well. It's part of your work. Or related siya, kumbaga. So, common signs and symptoms uh, of a musculoskeletal injury would be, one, decreased range of motion. If sabihin, hindi niya na maigalaw. Hindi niya may flex halimbawa yung kanyang mga, yung kanyang kamay, kanyang arms. So, decreased grip strength, loss of function, muscle fatigue, numbness, burning or tingling sensation, and of course, the classic would be pain. So, since if you experience a musculoskeletal injury class, pain is probably one of the most Pain is the common symptom na pwede natin makita as pharmacist. So, what are the clinical manifestations that can be assessed by a pharmacist? Kasi hindi naman natin pwede tingnan yung in terms of range of motion, talaga bang gagalawin natin yung patient? Di ba? Hindi naman. Usually, as a pharmacist, ang tangi mga assess natin is yung pain nung isang patient. Now, how do we assess, as a pharmacist, how do we assess the pain of our patient? You can usually inquire class about the PQRST. Okay? So, as a pharmacist, tanongin natin yung patient natin, what are the precipitating factors? Ano yung ginagawa ng pasyente which causes them to have pain? Okay, quality of the pain? Is it sharp? Is it throbbing? Is it dull? Okay, region of pain? Tanong nyo, saan po ba ang sakit? Nasa kamay? Nasa joints? Nasa likuran? Severity of the pain? Normally, we ask the patient to rate their pain in a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most painful. And time-related. Okay, kasi class sometimes, uh, pwedeng sa gabi lang nagpa-precipitate yung pain or kung kailan malamig or mainit and so on and so forth. Now, another thing class that we can do is to assess for swelling. Okay, tingnan natin kung may pamamagabang nangyayari sa pasyente natin. And of course, redness around the area. So, what are the possible causes of the disease? Okay, so of course, one would be um, work posture. Okay, and movement, so can cause discomfort and fatigue if maintained for long periods of time. Sa halimbawa, um, what do you call this? Um, work posture. Nakaupo ka lang buong araw. Tapos, pa, ano, hindi, hindi, ano, hindi ergonomic yung design ng desk mo. Okay, so that's going to cause some problems. Activities like standing for too long, 
for long periods of time. Halimbawa, nung dati, nung face-to-face, lagi ako nakatayo. Okay, can cause sore feet, general muscular fatigue, and low back pain. Okay, well, siguro for for today, I mean, for this time. Okay, I, I still stand for a long period of time, pero that's more on because of the lab work that I'm doing. Anyway, so sports such as gymnastics, figure skating, etc. Okay, so vibration may encourage musculoskeletal disorders because it might affect muscles, tendons, and joints. And nerves, kasi may repetitive movement, eh. may shaking movement doon. And of course, repetitive movements cause are hazardous because we use the same joint and muscle groups over a long period of time. So, di ba sabi natin, one of the reasons why we get muscular, musculoskeletal injuries is due to repetitive motions. Okay, eh, so kung lang gumagalo yung joints ng daliri mo, eh, di ba? So, it could cause some problems. So, halimbawa, when you are... Um, an office worker or kadalasan computer lang ang kaharap mo, okay, 63% of the body pain class that you might be feeling would be lower back pain followed by the neck, shoulders, and then the wrists. Okay, another cost class for or another risk factor for getting musculoskeletal pain or injuries would be age. It's common among older people. Okay, and teenagers who are kinetically active being obese, okay, for the primary reason class na your body needs to work, your joints, okay, especially your joints, kailangan nila mag-work double time because they need to accommodate for your weight, okay? So, syempre, weight-bearing kasi yung ano, joints natin, eh. So, the heavier you are, mas mahihirapan lalo ang joints mo, which could lead to injury in the long run. And in terms of gender class, women are more higher, uh, much higher risk for getting musculoskeletal injuries than men because, well, women gets pregnant. And second, uh, sila yung madalas naka-heels. Now, what are the things that I need to assess as a pharmacist that would exclude self self-treatment? Kumbaga, ano yung dapat i-watch out natin sa mga patients natin? Once they report these things, okay, kailangan hindi natin silang, tawag dito, hindi, hindi, na, hindi na sila pwedeng mag-self-treat. Okay, so normally if it's a moderate to severe pain, so a pain score of greater than 6, or a pain that lasts for more than 2 weeks. Kasi class, if it's more than 2 weeks, that's not acute pain anymore. Malamang sa malamang class, chronic pain na yan, which there could be a underlying condition causing that pain. So of course, as a pharmacist, we're not equipped with the know-hows on how to diagnose these things. So we have to refer our patients to physicians. Pain that continues for more than 7 days after treatment. So halimbawa, um, Binigyan mo, na ng, binigyan mo na yung patient ng analgesics, tapos seven days na, hindi pa rin nawawala ang pain. Kumbaga, it's still recurring. Na-alleviate, pero bumabalik-balik. So, delikado din yun. So, therefore, uh, you might, you'll need to, ano, um, what do you call this? Kailangan ng magpatingin sa doktor, ang ating pasyente, pag ganun. Okay? Increase intensity or change in, in character or pain. And pelvic or abdominal pain, other than dysmenorrhea. So, pwede kasi may other cause na yun. So, halimbawa, kung pelvic pain, pwedeng UTI, okay, or abdominal pain, baka mamaya may ulcer na pala yung patient natin. So, hindi na uubra yung simpleng analgesic or sometimes our analgesics might, might worsen the condition pa. Next one, if there's an accompanying nausea, vomiting, fever, or other signs of systemic infection or disorder. Kung may signs na of infection yung patient, obviously, we can we have to exclude that from self-treatment. Visually deformed joints. Kita mo nung baliktad na yung kamay ng patient, bibigyan mo pa ba ng paracetamol? Okay, so abnormal movement, weakness in any limb, or suspected fracture. Okay, of course, class, if a patient is already in their third trimester of pregnancy, which is pinaka-highest ang risk for, um, highest risk, okay, for any damages sa fetus. So, huwag na natin, ano yan, i-refer natin agad yung patient sa isang physician. Or, if the patient is less than two years old. Kasi, class, if... According to FDA, the minimum age for a uh, for OTC. Okay, sorry. According to ano, FDA, um, ito yung age group na hindi pwedeng bigyan ng OTC. Yung less than two years old. Normally, pag more than two years old na, pwede na mag OTC preparation yung baby, yung ano yung 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 patient. Okay. So here is a comprehensive list of self care options. Okay. Normally, when you do product selection. Okay, always determine patient preference factors. So, ano yung mas preferred na dosage form? Kaya ba nila mag-capsule, um, tablets? Kasi may mga ganda yung OTC preparation for pain. Like the NSAIDs, right? Or, mas pref- syempre, pag bata ang patient, obviously, we might prefer 
them to use um, syrups in case of use, cost, in some cases, odor of the preparation. Okay, so for pharmacologic treatment, normally we have your OTCs, such as topical analgesics and NSAIDs. Meron tayong uh, Volta rin. Okay, yung pahid-pahid lang siya. Meron tayo, of course, oral analgesics. And then we have muscle relaxants that are OTC. Now, for non-pharmacologic treatment class, we have thermotherapy. Ibig sabihin, uh, usually hot compress. Or pwede rin mga cold compress, depending kung anong type of pain meron ka. And then, of course, we use the RICE method. We'll explain this in a while. Then we also have complementary and alternative therapy and other preventive measures. So for pharmacologic treatment, so the lowest effective dose of an analgesic should be used. Okay, analgesic doses should be decreased and stopped as soon as possible as the injury improves. Okay, now for over-the-counter drug options, so for topical analgesics, we can use that. Okay, so we have on local analgesics, um, anesthetics, antipyretic, and uh, other counter irritants they can be used as adjuncts to pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic therapy so topical NSAIDs class penetrates the, through the skin but once absorbed it shows a strong affinity for tissues there's clinical evidence that indicates that topical NSAIDs are effective over short periods of for muscular conditions pero kung for long treatment na siya class hindi na siya ganun ka effective right so examples, um, we have rubifacients, such as methyl salicylate, um, omega-3. Ah, uh, yung ato-ato? Um, yung pinapahid-pahid. Omega-3. Omega, basta omega yun. O di kaya, um, methyl salicylate. Ano ba? Um, yung color green. Basta yun yun. Okay, it produces heat sensation, which helps alleviate the pain that you feel. So camphor and methyl produce cooling sensation. Methyl nicotinate causes vasodilation, and capsaicin causes irritation without heat. Now, how capsaicin works as an analgesic is quite unique. Actually, parang almost similar din naman to how rubifacients work. Normal kasi kasi capsaicin is a substance that can overstimulate your pain receptors. So, pag pinahid mo siya sa muscles mo, halimbawa gaya. Okay, matitrigger, ma-activate yung pain receptors mo. Pero dahil na-activate ang pain receptors class, ang nangyayari is the Capsaicin helps desensitize your pain receptors. At once na desensitize na yung pain receptors, nababawasan yung pain na nararamdaman mo. Okay? So that's how capsaicin usually works. So patients should be advised not to use heating devices with topical counter irritants or to cover with a tight bandage kasi intended sila kas for local effects. If you add a heating device on top of your local anesthetics, as uh, local, uh, local uh, topical counter irritants, Pwede siya ma-absorb systemically. Okay? So, in terms of dosing, it must be applied to the affected area 3 to 4 times a day, depending on your need. Pero normally, max na yung 4 times a day for not more than 7 days. Now, bakit may limit tayo na 7 days? Kasi dapat class after 7 days, nare-relieve na yung pain. And it shouldn't go back. Okay? Now, if the pain recurs, okay, and after 7 days, adyan pa rin siya, Ibig sabihin, may underlying cause na yun, which would merit class A physician visit. Okay. Another thing we have to be reminded of is that um, these um, topical counter irritants or these OTC preparations should not be given to children 2 years old or younger without consulting their physician. So here are examples class of the um, the guidelines on how to use your uh, topical ano, counter irritants. So let's proceed muna. Now, what about topical NSAIDs? So, they can directly act at the affected site, avoiding systemic adverse effects of oral administrations. However, class, these topical NSAIDs are contraindicated in patients who are sensitive to aspirin and other NSAIDs. Kasi may risk pa rin talaga siya, class, to be absorbed systemically, although not as high as the oral counterparts. And they are not recommended for use by pregnant or breastfeeding women or for children under 14 years of age. Okay, so we have here creams, gels, and sprays. So some important considerations. Uh, how do you apply these gels? Okay, so you usually apply it to an affected area, then massage into the skin gently. Right? Generally, use these, these medic medicines are applied to the skin two to four times a day. So example of which would be Foltaren gel. Okay, so just take note class. Do not apply these gels um, 
in skin that are broken or near the eyes, nose, mouth, genitals, or anal areas. Do not use plasters or dressing on top of these medicines. Kasi nga, pwedeng mag-develop ng heat yun. At the same time, ma-absorb systemically yung mga medications. Which is, of course, hindi... Hindi na... You know, it was intended for that. Okay? So, next one. Sensitivity to sunlight. There is a risk that your skin can become sensitive to light if you're using these topical NSAIDs. So, do not expose your skin to sunlight during treatment and for two weeks after stopping. So, how long should you use these oral... And, uh, sorry, topical NSAIDs. So, if you're using anti-inflammatory for acute muscle pain, treatment lasts for as long as you have pain and inflammation. So, for example, a few days or weeks. However, yun na nga sabi natin class, di ba? Kadalasan class, if it's more than seven days na ang pain, na hindi nawawala, you might want to consider uh, recommending a physician visit to your... Uh, what do you call this? To your patient. Okay? Okay, so that's that for topical NSAIDs. What about for oral analgesics? So oral analgesics class may be taken three to four times a day and are usually used to relieve pain. Okay. Uh, pain associated with muscle injuries. Okay, so usually it's indicated for self-care treatment of mild to moderate pain. Instruct patient to not exceed the recommended doses on package instructions. Like say, for example, for paracetamol, normally you should not exceed 8 grams. Okay. Ayan. So what else? Uh, should not be used for more than 10 days in adults or 5 days in children without physician supervision. Right? Okay. Now, class, ito mga pala before I forget. 8 grams ang usually class nakasulot sa package ng paracetamol. Pero if we are to recommend as a pharmacist, okay, normally we only limit it to 4 grams or 4,000 milligrams. So that's taking paracetamol 500 milligrams uh, 8 times a day. Okay? Now, however class, pwede naman kasing i-extend yung max dose ng ating paracetamol to 8,000 milligrams or 8 grams in 24 hours. Technically, that's still safe. Pero, as a pharmacist class, hanggang 4,000 mg lang pwede natin i-recommend. Okay? Yan, para safe tayo. So, what are other NSAIDs that we can use to uh, counteract pain? Okay? So, we have um, aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, and sodium. So, indicated for self-care treatment of mild to moderate pain. So, pretty much the same as with paracetamol. Okay? Um, ibuprofen and naproxen do not have do not have significant anti-inflam effect at OTC dosages. So, normally, class, yun ang ginagamit natin for pain lang talaga. Okay? Now, if you want to get the, um, what do you call this? The anti-inflammatory effect of naproxen or ibuprofen, normally, class, you take it at doses that can, uh, madalas na ginag, ano, uh, madalas na pinaprescribe na ng physician. Okay, pero again, as a pharmacist class, we can't really recommend doses ano, exceeding their max dose as OTC. Okay? So class, uh, isa sa mga gusto ko talaga aralin nyo dito would be yung max dose ng ating OTC prep. Okay? And how you dose this. Right? So something that you... This is something that you learn class through experience. Pero ngayon pa lang sa... Um, sinasabi ko siya yung memorizing nyo na para, ma, ano, para mas maalala ninyo. Okay? So... Um, this NSAID should not be used for longer than 10 days in adults or 5 days in children without physician supervision, similar to paracetamol. Kasi class, pag more than that na, most likely may underlying cause na yung pain na yun. And it can cause some adverse effects na rin. So advise patients not to exceed recommended doses on packaging instructions. So here are some of the uh, max dose ng ating mga NSAIDs. So for ibuprofen, max dose is 1,200 milligrams. For naproxen, it's 1,375. Ketoprofen, but actually, ketoprofen usually is prescribed is 75 milligrams. Okay? So, yun. Pati dosing class nandito na lang. So, you can just read this. For OTC muscle relaxants. Okay? So, example natin dito would be metocarbamol. But I haven't seen this in our, ano, in our market. Okay? Usually indicate for short-term treatment of spasms associated with acute muscular condition, musculoskeletal conditions. Okay? So, there's poor evidence that muscle relaxants reduce symptoms. So, may benefit. 
Main benefit may be due to sedative effect. Caution in regards to drowsiness, cognitive, and functional impairment when using muscle relaxants. But normally, class, um, using your NSAIDs would be more than enough. If it doesn't work, most likely, kailangan ng patient ng mas, mas matindi, mas matinding um, analgesics. So, which would, of course, require them to use prescription drugs. Alright, so let's continue. Now, for non-pharmacologic treatment, we have the following, the RICE method. So, this is used for minor injuries to relieve um, pain, to reduce the swelling, and speed up the healing process. So, normally, treatment should be started as soon as the injury occurs. Normally, the RICE method should also be continued for at least 48 hours as follows. So, you have your rest, pahinga, lagyan ng ice, okay, compress, then elevate. So, when we say rest class, so reduce regular activities, take the weight off the injured area. So, kung halimbawa sa may paanan, obviously class, kailangan hindi lalagyan ng bigat yung paang may injury. Okay, that's why a use of crutch may help. Then, of course, put ice. Kasi class, it helps numb the pain. Okay, at the same time, can also reduce the swelling. Okay, so put ice or cold packs in the injured area for 20 minutes, 4, ta four to 8 times a day. Remove the ice after 20 minutes to avoid cold injury. Then add compression. So put even pressure on the injured area by binding to help reduce the swelling. And elevate it. So put the injured area on a pillow at a level above the heart to reduce uh, edema formation. Now when do we use heat treatments? Or what they call thermotherapy. Okay, Normally class we use this for chronic conditions to help relax and loosen tissues and to stimulate blood flow to an area. Right? So, normally, class, when you, halimbawa, may, may, ano, pag may inflammation yan, class, kadalasan gagamit natin ng cold compress. Pero kung ang injury mo, class, is say, for example, muscle strains, okay, sore muscles, mga ganyan, normally, class, mas maganda yung hot compress. Okay? To help relax and loosen the tissues. Alright? So, use heat treatments for chronic conditions, such as an overuse, such as overuse injuries, before participating in activities. So, other alternate medicines that we can use is, would be glucosamine chondroitin. Very common class na binibigay sa mga tao may osteoarthritis. Okay, so a, a large part of a large protein molecule that gives cartilage elasticity. So, by using glucosamine chondroitin, it can help inhibit enzymes that degrades your cartilage. Okay, so the dose would be usually um, 1,500 milligrams glucosamine plus 1,200 milligrams of chondroitin daily. Caution ng class because for people with shellfish allergy because the, of the glucosamine components. Another thing you have to remember, uh, these glucosamine ano, um, supplements may raise blood sugar in diabetics and may increase the effect of warfarin. So watch out na lang doon. So here are some of the ano, of other um, what do you call this? supplements na pwede natin gamitin. It's used risk and effectiveness. So let's, I won't be discussing this too much anymore. So for preventive measures, how do we prevent you from getting musculoskeletal injuries or something that you can advise your patients? Okay, so normally before doing any exercise, do a warm up. Okay, stretch, uh, warm up and stretching exercise to avoid getting injuries. All right. However, because when you work out nowadays, hindi advisable na talagang, ano, uh, what you call this? Yung mag stretching ka na talagang babanatin mo yung muscles mo. Kasi you tend to lose strength naman. Especially when you're weightlifting. Okay, normally ang stretching nila class is yung ano lang, parang, ano na tawag dito? I forgot the term. Pero yung mabilis ang stretching lang siya. Kasi so that your muscles won't lose strength. Okay? Ayan. So, wrap injury, injured muscles and joints with protective bandage or tape. So, to prevent repetitive strain, exercise the muscles that are vulnerable to injury. Kasi class, the thing with muscles is the more that they are injured, pero wag, wag, wag naman to the point na talaga na-stretch siya. Normally, when you, when you work your muscles class, there are minor injuries there. And every time that the muscles are injured, it repairs itself. Okay, making it much stronger. That's the principle behind workouts or weightlifting, right? Kasi the moment na mag-lift mag ka ng heavy weights, kakaroon ng micro-tears ang ating muscles. And the body tends to repair those tears, which makes the muscles stronger. Okay? Kaya, if you, ano, you need to exercise yung mga common 
muscle groups niyo na nai-injure para mas ma, mas maging mas matibay. Right? So to prevent tendonitis and cramps, warm up and stretch muscles before physical activity, drink sufficient fluids and not exercising to the point of exhaustion. So to prevent or reduce the occurrence of low back pain, do exercises to strengthen the muscles of the lower back and abdomen and use assistive devices such as walker or cane if needed. So to prevent or reduce the occurrences of osteoarthritis, on the other hand, avoid sedentary lifestyle. So keep the joints active, reduce your weight uh, if you are overweight. Right? So here's a treatment algorithm class. Okay, so this is something that you can, uh, naman, uh, it's quite self-explanatory. Okay, these are the things that will um, suggest whether or not you can give OTC preparation or needs medical and uh, referral. So I leave this I leave this to you guys to study. Basta ang tatanda lang natin lagi class, ano ba yung outcomes na kailangan ma-achieve natin when we are trying to relieve musculoskeletal pains. Okay, so parameters for a successful treatment includes the following. Obviously, there should be pain relief. Dapat mawala yung pain. If the pain is removed, okay, then that means the treatment is successful. So patient with minor sprains or strains will not require a second visit as the tissue heals and return to normal function. There should be re reduced number of visits indicating it in that would indicate um successful treatment regimen. So what about the things that might what are the things that might need a medical referral? So if the patient reports the pain is still persisting or has worsened after 7 days of using non-prescription analgesics. So pag ganun na more than 7 days refer to physician na. If the patient condition worsens by the occurrence of symptoms other than those that were evaluated at first visit and they the continued pain may indicate an ongoing process that could lead to long-term disability or Decrease mobility. Okay? Alright. So that's pretty much it class for musculoskeletal injuries. And thank you very much for listening. And I hope you learned something new regarding this topic.